Welcome back everybody. I'm Professor Rhett Smith from ProtonGuru.com. Today we're going to learn how to name polysubstituted aromatic compounds. And this is lesson 4.10 in the Organic Chemistry 2 Primer 2021. The first thing I want to point out is that there's a special sort of naming convention when you have two substituents on a benzene ring. When you have benzene as a parent chain, you can certainly use normal numbering system like you do for cyclohexane derivatives to indicate where one substituent is with respect to another. In the benzene compounds only, not in cyclohexanes, you can use an alternative system for indicating where the second substituent is. So consider a benzene that has a substituent X at one position already. Well, the carbon to which that's attached is called the ipso position. Now, you can't put any other substituents there because that carbon in benzene already has four bonds. You can't take away a pi bond or it's not benzene anymore. So we don't typically refer to that ipso carbon. But we've learned some substitution reactions where you can take a hydrogen and substitute it for something else. So if I did that on this compound, I could get a substituent there. And that substituent is said to be at the ortho position. That's only one space away from the initially present X substituent. If I put a substituent on either side of it, I still have a benzene ring with a substituent right beside it. So both those sites are called ortho positions. If I go to a carbon that is two spaces away from the initial site, whether that be to the left or the right, those are called the meta positions. Finally, if I put a substituent way down here on the complete opposite side of the ring from the initially present X substituent, I say this site is para to that initial site where X is attached. In the names of compounds, you'll see a little O dash, M dash, or P dash to indicate ortho, meta, or para substitution. So let's look at a couple of specific examples. Say I have two chloranes on a benzene ring. Well, benzene's my parent chain. I'm certainly able to number this 1, 2 dash dichloro and put benzene as the parent chain at the end. That's how I would be able to name it if it was a cyclohexane instead of a benzene, 1, 2 dichloro cyclohexane. But I have an alternative way I'm allowed to use as well. The substituents are right beside each other. That's indicated by the O for ortho. So you have the ortho isomer of dichloro benzene. Either one of these is a perfectly acceptable way to name that compound. So consider this case where we have two different substituents. Well, these are para to one another. So we can call this para, listing the substituents alphabetically, para bromofluorobenzene. Or we could simply number the substituents 1 bromo 4 fluorobenzene. The same holds true here where we have an ethyl group and a nitro group. Ethyl comes alphabetically before nitro, so we'd list ethyl first. So this is some type of ethyl nitrobenzene. They're meta to each other, so I can call this meta ethyl nitrobenzene. Or I can call this 1-ethyl 3-nitrobenzene. Now when we learned about naming monosubstituted benzene compounds, we saw that there were several that had common names. There are also a large number of polysubstitute benzene compounds that have common names, but here I'm just going to ask you to know one of these. And that's the case where you have two methyl groups on the benzene, whether those are ortho, meta, or para to each other. These compounds are all called xylene. And if the methyl groups are ortho to each other, it's of course ortho xylene, you write out O dash xylene, meta xylene, and para xylene, depending on whether the methyl groups are meta or para to one another. Going back to this idea that some of the benzene compounds with specific substituents have very specific names, I want to point out that when you're naming polysubstituted benzene compounds and you see one of these structures within the structure, you need to use that structure as the parent chain. So I'm going to call this something styrene, not something benzene. So I'm going to always give the number one substituent also to the group that made it styrene, or in this case phenol, or in this case benzaldehyde. And since these are all disubstituted benzene compounds, I have a choice to use either the numbering. So I have a substituent position 3. That substituent is cyclopropyl. So I can call this 3-cyclopropyl styrene. Or I can use the ortho meta para designation. And I can say this is meta 
cyclopropyl styrene. You write out the M dash and you read it meta cyclopropyl styrene. Identical approach for naming this compound in example B. You see that I have a chlorine on carbon number 2, so I could call this 2 chlorophen using the numbering convention, or I can say here's my starting point ortho to that at the ortho position is the chlorine, so I could call this orthochlorophenol. Likewise with the benzaldehyde at position 4, which is the ortho meta para position, I have a nitro group, so I call this either 4 or para nitro benzaldehyde. And you don't leave a space between here, you would just write out nitro. So the numbering or the convention of ortho meta para works for di substituted compounds. As soon as you have more than two substituents on a benzene ring, you can't use the ortho meta para. Like consider this compound. You see one of these special compounds, toluene, as the parent structure in this case, but the toluene substituent, the methyl that makes it toluene, has some substituents that are ortho to it, another one that's ortho to it, one that's para to it, so you can't use that. You have to use the numbering now. So if we number this, always starting with one for the substituent that makes it toluene and not benzene, two, three, four, five, six. You see we have three nitro groups at positions two, four, and six. This compound is two comma four comma six dash trinitrotoluene. This is a compound that you may have heard of. It's abbreviated TNT. Here's a compound where I've put xylene in the structure. That is specifically metaxylene. And you see that the bromo is down here. Now, how do I number this compound? It's these two methyl groups that make this a xylene, so I need to give those the lowest possible number. So one of them, I start with one. I number towards the second one to give them the lowest possible numbers. One, two, three, four, five. So it's 5-bromo-metaxylene. Now, of course, not every polysubstituted benzene compound like this has a parent chain that is a sort of common name structure like we saw for the toluene and the metaxylene. We could have a benzene that just happens to have three different substituents. Here we list these substituents in alphabetical fashion, bromo, chloro, and fluoro, and number them 1, 2, and 3. So this compound would be properly called 1-bromo, 2-chloro, 3-fluoro benzene.